Who are the pretenders and who are the contenders? We're more than halfway through the NFL season, but DraftKings Sportsbook is still pumping out unbeatable offers every single game. New customers can bet just five bucks on anything and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. DraftKings isn't stopping there. All customers can take advantage of a sweetener offer every game day this October. Get in on all the football action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the app now and use code SHANNON. New customers can bet just $5 on anything and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only DraftKings Sportsbook with code SHANNON. The crown is yours. He did come shake my hand. I told him I can't do that. You what do you do like that? Yeah, just like that yeah, I just told him I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I so, what he, so, so what did he say? He felt some type of way? <laughs> Man. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Hello, welcome to a special edition of Club Shay Shay on the road. I am your host, Shannon Sharp. I'm also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay. And the guy that's stopping by for a great conversation, he really doesn't need any introduction, but I'm going to give him some of his flowers right now. He's a multi-talented music producer, a world-renowned DJ, Grammy award-winning mega producer, multi-platinum recording artist, a music industry visionary, a global figure, pop sensation, bona fide hit maker, New York Times best-selling author. He has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, a motivational speaker, a guru, a positively, a philanthropist. Now he's a golfer, actor, entrepreneur, record label executive, radio personality, Innovative influencer, the Anthem King, the Quincy Jones of hip hop and RB, none other than DJ Khaled. Khaled, man, man that's an intro. That, that was the intro. You like that one? You like <laughs> man, that one, Khaled? Man, I'm like sitting here, I'm like, man, this feels good, man. First of all, I love you, brother. I'm a big fan of Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, you a legend, but I just love everything you do, man. It's the energy you put out there, and, and when I got invited on the show today, I was so excited. You know, I had to get a haircut when you pulled up. <laughs> you did. You know, I was getting getting right. So I appreciate the love, and, and thank you for coming to Miami. Man, thank you, you for having saying? me. Man, when I reached out, man, when I DM, when DM you and asked you, would you be willing, you're like, bro, are you serious? That's right. And and, and when I told people I was sitting down to do this interview with yeah. you, they're like, what's he like? I said, what you see on social media? I, I Positively, I'm talking about bless up, brother. Hey, congrats. I appreciate everything that you've done. So thank you for allowing me and my team to come down and, and do this and interview. Anytime, anytime. And I'm really excited about this. I told um. My queen, I was doing this, and everybody's just a big right. fan of you, man. You for the people, man. We love you. Well, thank you for how I don't know if you drink or anything, but I appreciate Let's you. This is my, this is my drink. Okay. To you and all your success and many more years of success. Appreciate you. Bless bro. up, brother. <sighs> Let's get it started. <laughs> Let's so get it started. A little cappuccino. What's the name of this drink? This is La Portier by Shea. This is my own cognac. It tastes great with cappuccino, too. I'm telling you. <laughs> So you gonna be up no, no, all day and be there for drink. That might be the. That might, that be, might the, be the thing. That's what I'm trying oh, to tell okay, you. You hear that? Cup cappuccino. Yeah, that's right. And cognac. That's right. That's right. Let's start with the golf tournament first. Yes. What made you decide? Started your foundation. Yeah. What does this foundation represent? It represents the young world. Okay. The kids. Uh, the community. Mm -hmm. Um. But also bringing awareness. with the golf. Bringing awareness to golf. Okay. More diversity. Right. But uh, the foundation. The heart of it is to help the kids. Right. Um. Give them scholarships. Yes. Uh, get involved in everything in the community. I have a team that we work seven days a week, nonstop. Every day we have to do something right. to uplift the kids and give back to the right. kids. You got to understand, I come from, you know, being on the radio, community radio, mm -hmm. 99 Jams in Miami. So I've been part of the Miami community from day one. I started with Luke right. on the radio station, 99 Jams. And just all the beautiful things that we do in Miami. In Miami, one thing we do, we're community driven. Yes. We're hometown, we support each other. Yes, you do. So when, you know, more blessings came in my life, I made it a priority and my wife as well made it a priority to give back to the kids. And it's not just the education, we're doing st uh, STEM programs. We're also touching the people. We're going right. in the community. And we're also collaborating with other charities to uplift the community. Right. And this right here to collaborate with Michael Jordan. Wow, yeah, that's big. You know how much community work he does. Yes. And to do this golf classic, what I love about the golf classic is it brought us all together. Yes. Unity 
to do things for the young world right. every single day. That's the priority, the kids. What made you decide to take up golf? Okay, so I used to play golf. Well, I didn't play. I used to um, mess around. My friend used to live on a golf course. Okay. Um, and we used to go to his house before we went to school. And we would just mess around. I had a natural swing. That was in middle school. Right. Um, but then um, about pandemic time, my people and my friends and my neighbors like, yo, let's go golfing. And I, and I went the other day, two years ago, and I, I swung the driver and I had that natural swing in me. Right. And, you know, we the best. Yes. So everything we do, we the best <laughs> at it. it, it yes. You know, that's what God right. bless us with. You right. know what I'm saying? So, of course, I, I, I caught the bug. And not even just that. Um, it helps me mentally. Right. Spiritually. Um, brings me more joy. Uh, it cleanses my vision, meaning has a no distort. There's a lot going on in the world. Correct. So when you're on the golf course, you just feel at peace and that zen. But at the same time, it's one of the hardest sports in the world. So you're right. out there fighting yourself. Like Michael Jordan, I heard him on an interview saying, it's like fighting yourself on the golf course to right. get better. Right. So every day I'm getting better and better. But what I love most about it is it's like life. It's not easy, right. but it's beautiful. Did you approach the game of golf like you did everything in your life? Says, I'm going all in. Yes. I'm going to get the most knowledge that I possibly can surround myself with people that can teach me this game, help me understand this game so I can be good at this game like I am at all things in my life? So, you know, one thing about Khaled is if I love something, I don't know how to do it halfway. Okay. So I want to go pro. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I want to yeah. go pro. Okay. I want to go pro. And um, that's just basically saying the heights of the uh, dedication, the ambition, and the passion that I put into golf. Mm -hmm. Just same way I put it into my music career. I love golf that much where I play seven days a week. Some people yoga, some people exercise, some people run, some people jog. I play golf. Yeah, that's your, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. your thing. Right. And the thing is that God put me on that golf course because, you know, I'm starting to, I'm, I'm happy. I look beautiful. God bless me. But now I'm starting to carve oh, my oh, greatness. Oh, 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 you're shaping yeah. that thing up, I'm Khaled. shaping it up. <laughs> so uh, two months ago, I was 287. Okay. Today I'm 268. Wow. And that's just from, you know, walking the course, swinging, swinging. But that's like every day. And, and, and golf helps me skip a few meals because I'm so into the game. So right. I might skip breakfast once in a while. Right. So I'm feeling healthy. But at the same time, you know that addiction. Yeah. When oh, you yeah. Exercise, Absolutely. You know that, yeah. What's that word? Uh, Endorphin, what's, what's endorphins. The, endorphins. Like, it's, it, I get all that. Yes. But then I come home and, and then when you eat that cheeseburger, it tastes different. <laughs> Because you're on the golf course all day. You know, especially when that toast is like, it's a little crispy. Little, little crispy and then yeah, that right. fresh lettuce and you bite it, yeah. it just tastes different. Right. Um, and then when I go in the studio, I just, after I get out the shower, I go in the studio, I put some Jordan shorts on and a white tee and some flip flops. And I just go in there and I just feel so refreshed and relaxed and so focused. And then being around my family, my kids love it and my wife is happy. And, you know, it's just a blessing, man. Like golf really, um, Bless me. You know right. what I'm saying? Where are you more at peace now? On the golf course or the studio? Man, that's like, that's like, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? You're trying to like. <laughs> you got to choose one yeah, of the yeah, kids. Yeah, it's like, yeah, which kid do you yeah, like? Yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, to be honest with you, I would say both. And okay. that's just the honest truth. Okay. Um, the golf course, I'll tell you a story. Like one day I got done playing golf and I was in my living room and I'm chilling and I got a call and like, like. Obviously, that person wasn't on the same energy. Right. Okay. I'm in, I'm in a great place. I'm right. Chilling. Right. Right. I'm vibing like you know, like and the blue skies. I'm like man, like and it wasn't nothing crazy. But I was like, let me do do me a favor. I'm gonna call you right back. I actually ran to the golf course just to sit in the the thing because that's where I feel like yo. I'm telling all my people around me, if you're not coming with this, protect your blessing and this this vibe to go to the next level. Um, that's where I'm at my li in my life right now. It's going to the next level. And, that, and by doing that, you have to protect your blessings. Right. Right? And I'm protecting my happiness because I have to be happy because I have beautiful boys. And I got a beautiful queen. And my job is to make sure they're happy. Right. right? So I got to feel good to make them happy. So if somebody comes around Cali with negativity. Oh, no. I tell them out the gate. And it ain't even being rude. I, especially if it's somebody I love. And sometimes they don't even realize it. Right. I pull them aside, yo, bro, I'm in a different place. Okay. I wow. golf every morning. Right. Call me if you want to golf. Right. You know, call me if you want to um, take things to the next level. Call me with some great, I don't, I, I'm, I'm trying to explain to everybody, I'm in peace. 
You know, there's a point in your yes, life. Yes. That I, and 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 I, I, you might get what I'm saying, but in my life, I'm at a place where I'm at peace. You know, I represent love, but at the same time, I'm just like really at peace. You know, and right. I want to protect that, and right. I want, and I. It's because you know, with joy, people think that. Um, you know, for me, joy is showing gratitude to God. Okay. And when you show gratitude to God, you know, and you be grateful, it, it, it turns into joy with your activities and the things that you put your mind to and do. You know, the way you talk, the way you speak, the way you move, the way you eat. Everything got to change if you want to level up. And I'm protecting these blessings as far as energy. You know, this world is a lot going on. Right. It's just a lot going right. on. and um. I got to protect my my energy because, you know, I guess golf also helps for me mental health. Right. Not saying that I have some mental health problems or nothing. No, but I I can tell you right now, my, I'm more. But it keeps you in a great place. Right. And that's a and and that's a that's a a beautiful feeling. Right. When you have that feeling, you right. want to continue right. that feeling, right. right? You're the king of anthems. Another Thank one. You. Bless up. Keep going. We the best. God did. God did. Of all the anthems that you started and created, and you hear everybody saying them. What's your favorite anthem? Ah, man. Um, my favorite one, I can't give you that favorite one because there's so many. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you have records like All I Do Is Win. Man, they, you know, play, they still play. Yeah, you know, that's never going that's away. That's a winner's national anthem. Yes. Can't, we can't, I have to say that. Yes. You know, um, then you got records like Wild Thoughts. And then you got records like me and Drake, Ross and Lil Wayne, I'm on one. Yes. You know, then you got records where, like every chance I get, yes. you know, with me, little baby and little dirt. It's so many, you know, I don't know if you know, I have 13 albums in the can. Like I put out 13 albums. Right. I'm working on my 14th album. Okay. And I'm proud of myself. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the reason why I'm saying that, because I want the young world to hear this, because in the game that I'm in, yes. some people can't make it past their first song. Right. Or their first album. Or make it past their sophomore album. I'm working on my 14th mm -hmm. album. And, and everybody every, wants to work with you, Khaled. I mean, and I want to work with them. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the blessing is that people know when you walk in a room with me, you know I'm, I'm a hard worker. The energy got to be right in the studio. That's the only way I would work. And I work with, like, how can I say, like, my records, I tell artists all the time, when you make a Khaled record, not only do I want it to be an anthem, you know, if you listen to the radio, you go to the club or you listen to some music on your phone and, you, and you'll hear music and you're like this. I want my record to be like this. Right. It stands out. Um, and if you listen to my anthems, it has that Khaled. It's a, it's a Khaled thing. And you only can get it from Khaled. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. speaking in third party, but right. I have to do that because I'm representing myself right now. But at the same time, it's like it's a blessing to be able to work with all my favorite artists and all the new artists, too. Um, coming up in the game and meeting them and showing each other respect. It's just a blessing because I love making right. music. And when you love what you do, you go all out. Well, I can't say this about you, is that your records will stand the test of time because like you said, all I do is win. God did. Yeah, uh, God the one did. you did the feature, uh, with Kanye. When you go into the studio, are you thinking this got to stack? This has, this is Khaled on it. Yes, yes. It's got to be Khaled approved. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I go in the studio, what I do is I start, we, we make the music first. Okay. Uh, the production. If it's me or me and my team, or if it's me and collaborating with other great producers. Okay. Um, I just focus on the sonics, the sound of the way I want my album to sound or the records to sound musically. And then I start getting into some concept and ideas before I call an artist to do any vocals. Because I like what, the way I do work, and you can ask artists, when they walk in the studio and I play a record, that's it. That's the one. Okay. Like, it ain't nothing to talk about. Right, okay. That's how I, I make sure of that. Right. Like, I'm not here to experiment. Right. I'm not here to, like, maybe. No, if I call you, that's the one. Yeah. And I'm blessed for the artist to feel that energy that I'm presenting to them, but at the same time, no, that's the one. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, it's a blessing, man, because if you think about it like God did, we turn the Grammys into the Holy Grail. Yes. We closed out the Grammys. My brother Jay-Z did like an eight-minute verse on there with Lil Wayne, Rick Ross, uh, Friday, and John Legend. When I made that record, not only was it sent from God, you know what I'm saying, to get Hov to do that was such a blessing for him to do the song 
and a performance. He doesn't even do that for himself. No. I mean, you know this. this mm -hmm. I'm not making this up. Like, guys, like, I pinch myself when I pray and I think. I, I text Jay-Z out of, out of nowhere and just say thank you a hundred times a month. Just because I know this is, like, I, like, when we was at backstage before we got on stage and we in the suits and I'm like, Oh, you looking around? I'm like, looking around like, yo, you know what I'm saying? You see what's going on? So those blessings, I know my fans appreciate it. And that's what keeps me going. Right. My fans expect me to perform at the highest level right. and expect me to deliver. Right. Once I've delivered so many times, so consistently throughout the years, yeah. my fans, like right now, summertime, I haven't dropped the record yet. Right. And they know I'm. You do. I, I am you, summer. You do. You do. No, I say it could be winter, and I could turn it to summer. Right. That's what Calvin does. That's what. So I'm about to drop some new music soon. But my fans, I, I, I hear them out there, and I see them. They tell me they're screaming, "Let's go golfing." They also screaming, "Cal, where's the anthem?" Because I know you coming. I'm coming. You know what I'm saying? That, my fans is what keep me going. Right. You know what I'm saying as far as the music. When you did, God did. Yes. Did everybody come up with their own lyrics? Did Wayne do his own thing? Absolutely. Ho do his own thing? It was, it you was, just set the it, beat. Yeah, so God did was my man Friday okay. sent me just the chords. Okay. And him singing God did. Obviously, I already put in the universe, you know, if you follow me on social media, they don't believe in us. God did. Like, yeah, yes, so yes. he came and sent me a thing with chords and he was singing the hook of God did. Okay. So I'm like, oh, man. This, this is dope. So I, originally I was going to keep it as an interlude just like that with nothing. Then I started listening to it. I was like, nah, let's put, let's make this into a song. So I started, we put me, Street Runner, we put drums on there and, you know, I, you know, music and just turn it into like a, with no vocals on it besides Friday, just turn it into like a masterpiece, a musical masterpiece. So now it's just the beat. Okay. And now we got drums on it. Right. Now we got you know, instruments on it with Friday's chords and with him singing on it. So I sent it to Ross. Uh-oh. Yeah, because, you know, Ross is my 305 brother. And that's yeah, my, yeah. That's yeah. my brother. You know, we go way back. You know what I'm saying? I sent it to Ross. And Ross know if I send him something, he know, cow it up to something. Yeah. But also, Ross will send it back that same day or that next morning. Like that. that my, my whole career. You know, Ross has been in every single album of mine. Yes. Same with Wayne. Yes. So I sent it to Ross. I was in the Bahamas. He sent the verse back. And when he said, something, something, put me with the sharks. God did. Then when he got into that yeah. mode, you know, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my, no, right. I'm losing my mind. Right. Like I'm losing my mind. I'm running around. I'm just blowing speakers. So I hit Wayne. I hit Mac Main. And I like, oh, man, Mac Main, I need Wayne. You know, Wayne is family to me. And um, he's like, sent it through. So I sent it to him. Wayne sent it back the next morning. I get Wayne's verse. I'm like, oh my God. So you know, you got, you got, yeah, so yeah, I, no, I, I got, I, I'm like, I'm like, I got something. Yeah, the man talking, he talking, he, so many bars on that. I'm like, wow, right? I'm losing my mind. Hitting Wayne, hitting Ross. I'm so excited. So now, uh oh, I said, hold up, Kevin. <laughs> you can keep it like this. Or and you can win big, or you could do what you do, Coward. So, I took a jet. I flew to New York. Uh oh. I found out Ho was in New York. You know, Ho's my brother's family. I told him I need to see him. I told him I just need five minutes of your time. Um, the blessing was I had a few hours of his time. But I asked for five. He gave me a few hours. I come see him. I said I would love to play you my album, and I would love for you to pick my album cover. I had like three options of album covers and I wanted him to pick it. I was happy with all three of them. And I was like, I want to play you my album. So the first song I played was Drake, No Secret. I set it off like that. He's like, ooh, that's crazy. And then it went into God Did. Uh-oh. So now, uh -oh, uh -oh. so while, while God Did is playing, I'm looking at him. <laughs> I ain't asked him to get on it yet, but I'm looking at him. Okay. And I was like, you know, I'm trying to tell him, like, and he's listening to it. So now you're hearing, and then the beat coming, and Ross coming, and he like, the Wayne coming, he like that. And then I purposely left an open verse oh. with just the beat. Yeah. So now the beat is playing, and I see him doing this. Look. And then I start hearing, like, 
like rapping. So boom, when we turned the record off, he already had like four or five bars already out the head saying, I already spitting some of the rhyme. So I was like, yo, I really need you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I was being cool. So I continued to play the album. Right. And he's like, oh, this is not. He was just loving the album, loving the album. Then we went back to God then. Okay. He kept listening to that. So now we popping champagne. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yo, all I'm, you asked for was five minutes. Yeah, yeah, five Now we popping champagne. I'm standing in the room with a cigar. He lighting a cigar. He doing this. Like, you know, he ain't confirmed nothing yet. Yeah, okay. we just, it's just a vibe. <laughs> yeah, right? okay. So boom, make a long story short, on the the on me me leaving the room, he's like, yo, send me um God did. S- send it to me. Like, I know what that means. Like, you know, like send it to him. So I'm looking at Lanny S like, you know, I'm, you know, I got to be cool now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I got to show my excitement, yeah, but I still yeah, got to okay, be like. Yeah, okay, yeah, we so did we that sent thing. it to him, and I'll never forget. He texts me and goes, yo, can I have a book studio? I think it was like book studio at uh, 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock or something like that. I only got like an hour because I got to catch a helicopter to the Hamptons. So I'm thinking like book the studio. He going he gonna to do it, but he going to get to it. Like, right, you know, it right. might take it. You know, I don't know. Right. But I'm going to do it. I'm excited. He said, book studio, that means something about to happen. So we book studio. He FaceTimes me. Now, remember, he said he got an hour and he got to catch the helicopter to go to the Hamptons. Right. You know, I don't know how that works over there. You right. jump in the helicopter, yeah, yeah, Hamptons. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole thing, right? Yeah. And I guess it cuts off. I don't know, right? <laughs> so he FaceTimes me and the song is playing in the background. He's rhyming. So I'm listening to him. He's smiling and I'm listening to it and I'm hearing him spit. I'm like, oh my God. But the problem is, after a minute, it ended up being two minutes. It ended up being three minutes. It ended up being four minutes. It ended up being like five minutes. I'm like looking at him. He's like, and I'm like, what? So I, 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 forget me trying to hear this. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I just keep hearing his <laughs> voice for that long. Yeah. Like, I'm not expecting that. Right. So he says, I got to go catch the helicopter. He's, ex- you know, like, like, I did it for you. So Guru sends me the song. So now he sends out running the studio. Now I'm putting a blend to it and I'm losing my mind because there's so many quotable, so many bars. But not even just that, I felt like he told, because I'm a real Jay-Z fan. Yeah. I felt like he put his whole career of flows and 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 life in one verse. Right. You know, like the the book of whole, like, you know, yes. whole did. Cause you know, God did, and then when we was in, when we was when I played the record, we was, I was like, yo, tell him what whole did. And, I, and he did, you know. So it was the biggest blessing in the world to get the song done. That was one thing. And it was, uh, it, it, the culture went nuts, right? But to be able to get the opportunity to perform it at the Grammys. Yeah, man. They shut it down. Right. But the thing is, for him to say yes was bigger for me than just the performance. Right. Right. Because I've never seen him really do that for himself. He did that maybe a long time ago. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, you know that thing, you don't want to abuse the love? Yeah, right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though I know it's love, but it's like, some things is so great. Right. He felt what I felt. We had to do that for hip hop. Right. We had to do that. It's 50 year anniversary, but not even just that. We got to do that for hip hop. It's bigger than us. And we did that. Right. So he it. told you he had a minute. He ended up giving you eight minutes. <sighs> Did you like, I got to put all this, I, I, I can't cut any of this, oh, no. I, I got to put all this no. on here. Let me tell you, Wayne and Ross and Ho, those are my brothers for real. Not yes. my rap friends. Yeah. No, these are my brothers. Right. It's family. Like, we, like, I've known them so long and like, we really have real stories together, real moments together. And those are my brothers. They would, they never told me no. Right. It's just, it's we, and I would never tell them no. Right. Um. But I've worked with artists, they might want to hear, especially when you got a hove on there. Yeah, yeah. They want they might want to go fix fix theirs because they only they might, but they know if it's Khaled, Khaled. You know, I don't like calling people saying my records to get on as a feature. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to tell somebody the other day, because I'm working on my new album, and I said, nah, my records ain't features. Uh uh, you getting on a feature. My records are moments. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. these are anthems. These are these are they're gonna talk about this forever. Our records, when we work together, they play forever. The timeless, the moments. When we come together, that's a moment. So the, 
when they found out that Hov was on is when they had to clear the record, meaning through their lawyers yes. or their management. Right. So I'm sure like, yo, Cat, we got Hov on there. You know what I'm saying? So right. I'm expecting like, yo, I want to add some more stuff to it or this. Nah. And everybody was just excited about it. And the first time they heard it is when the world heard it. See, I work different, Shannon. I work wow. different. And some of the new artists that's working with me now, they're learning how I work because some of them don't understand that. Because I like to keep even the person that's on my record excited. Right. I, I don't like people taking my record after, after we record. They actually take it home. Right. I, I, I usually, like, if you do, it's because of the circumstances I had to work in your studio or something. Right. But when you work with me, I don't like to let nobody have a copy of my record. Right. But I don't want it to leak. Cut down leaks. And I want you to stay excited. Because if you listen to it every day, I might not come out for another six months. Right. I don't know. I work off of God. God tell me when to come. Right. So I do that for our protection and to keep us excited so when the record do come out, you're excited as much as the fan is right, excited. Right. With your own work. Right. You know, I'm dip. Yo, Chan. There's people and there's Khaled. Yeah, okay, like, I'm is that what's up? like, you know how you got the jacket? Yeah, you know, yeah. You know that jacket? Yeah, yeah. I, I got a jacket in the music world. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, like this album I'm working on, I'm trying to, the message that I'm going to put out there. And it's like, you're getting like really exclusive because I haven't told nobody I was working on a new album yet. Right. But I am working on a new album. Wow. Some of the message I'm going to put out there is that we have to learn to appreciate each other. We have yeah, to appreciate each other as brothers yeah. and sisters. And because if it's gone, don't appreciate it then. Right, it's too late. Appreciate it when, when you got it. When you got it. You know what I'm saying? Because what we giving these people is not regular. Right. What you doing is not regular. It's not. Right. It's not. Like, there's a lot of people do what you're doing right now. They ain't doing what you're doing. They ain't coming with the yellow linen and, you know, the glasses like that with the talk, you know what I'm saying, with the pearly whites. They ain't doing it. And I'm just telling you, we different. Yeah, right. And I just want people not to take nothing for granted because I don't. You know what I'm saying? I don't take life for granted. I pray to God every day. I don't take my friends for granted. I don't take the music I've made for granted. I act like I just started today because I know it's special. You know what I'm saying? I know when I'm doing something special and I know when I see something special and I know when I hear something special. So I'm going to make sure that I love it and I treat it and I show my appreciation. And this ain't no bullshit. Excuse my language. This is real life. This is who I am. And when I make this music, I go all out for the fans. Not just the fans. I go out, go out all out for the artists that's on my records. Right. So that's why I keep working so consistently with the biggest artists in the world because they know how passionate and how much I love this. You know what I'm saying? When I, when I work with a Jay-Z or a Drake or a Lil Wayne or a Ross or a Lil Baby or a Future, I go all out. Not just making it. I go all out to make sure the world can hear it. I go out there and campaign for us. I do everything. I'm not these other guys. I'm not. I'm sorry. Let me sorry, ask you getting, this. I, I just, I just, you you, got you, me. I, we love it. We love the energy. But let me ask you this. I heard the story that Michael Jackson, what drove him to what he did is that he kept trying to make Thriller. Yeah, yeah. Thriller was once in a generation. Yeah. It was once in a historical event. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of times historical events only happen once. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. what make them historical. Yeah, 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 right. So how does DJ Khaled says, okay, if I did 15 million, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I don't do 15 million on this one, it ain't as good. If it doesn't do diamond, if it yeah. doesn't do this, right, if it right, doesn't right, do right, that, right, right. how do you guard against that, Khaled? Well, you know, I, you know, I never worry about the numbers. Um, what I care about is the impact. Oh, okay. You okay. know what I'm saying? Some records, it's what's so beautiful about music. Some records, um, the impact is so big that you get all the uh, blessings in abundance. Right. From the numbers. Right. From the impact. And then some records, it's just impact in a different way where it comes from right here and then it just starts doing this. It just right. goes everywhere and then it just becomes massive. I care about the impact of it. Right. Um, that's what I do when I make music. Like, like I have, I, I tell, the other day I was in a, with this artist and I said, yo, I don't make records that go pop. You know what I'm saying? My records, they just go pop because they the biggest. Like when you start trying to make a pop record, that means it's not, like it's like you're, you're making, we create over here. I'm gonna be me and I'm gonna make sure I'll be true to myself and true to my music and you love it so much that 
it explodes where everybody love it. Even if you don't listen to hip hop, right. you love it. That's the type of records I try and put my energy to make. You know what I'm saying? And that's why they become anthems. You know what I'm saying? Even if you wasn't listening to, to our music, you heard it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's the blessing. I think, I think when you start worrying about going diamond is when you don't go diamond. Okay. I think you go in there and you put your best effort and you uh, work so hard and you pray that it connects with the people. And then there's no limits after that. Right. But you have to work hard as an right. artist too. You can't just think that you that cool. Not nah, I me. Mean, I don't do that. I work. I work. Hey, I'm, I work. As I sit here and listen to you, you don't say, well, I got Jay-Z. I mean, I got Hove. I got Babe. I got Lil One. I got Wheezy. I got Ross. I got Drake. Yeah. Oh, it's going to do this. No. You go in like, hey, I might have the best players, but we're going to put this thing, we're going to put this time in. We got, I got to put the time in. And, and another thing, too, is it's not about getting the best players. It's about making the best record, the great record. Okay. A lot of people get, fit. might get a feature and get some. I know, I know a lot of records where they got some of the biggest artists. It doesn't mean it's the hit. doesn't mean it goes. No, it's about making the great record. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Every time I'm in the studio with, with the greats, Listen, I'm, I, I'm just, listen, I'm good at what I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And even the greatest artists, I try my hardest to push more greatness out of them the same way they would do it for me. Right. Because when we're in the studio, I'm pushing so much greatness out of them and they're doing the same thing to me. You know what I'm saying? So that's the blessing. And, and my goal is to continue to work with Rihanna, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Drake, Lil Wayne, Lil Baby, Future, Charlotte, all the people I ever worked with, the goal is to continue to work with right. them. Because if you continue to work with them, that means you did a great job the right. last time you worked with them. Yes, yes. That's, you yes. know what I'm saying? Right. So obviously we have a connection and the fans love it. Have you ever had to tell someone they needed to do a verse over? Um, or you let it rock? Cause you dealing, hold on now, Kylie. Kylie, you dealing with the best yeah, of the best yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, you know yeah. the bigger the guy, the bigger the ego. Well, well, well. I'm I'm not gonna name names, but I've been in situations where you asked them to do it over. No, I asked them not to take when it's more than a subliminal, yeah. and it's not. And it, it, I, I'm a I'm I'm a guy that puts people together right. that can usually people that usually don't work with together. Right. That I usually can get them to work together because of. They know if it's coming from me, it's almost a way of saying it's peace. Right. And it's love. Right. So I make sure, I try my hardest because it's still hip hop and you still got to, just like as a football player, you still got to, you know, yeah. and still talk that trash. Right. That's just part of the game. Right. And you got to respect that. But at the same time, as I try to make sure it doesn't go to another dimension. Right. Because of who I am and what I'm about. You know what I'm saying? So I love everybody. So, I've, I've been I've been behind the scenes. I can tell you this, you know, if I ever put a documentary out, there'll be a lot of great stories of Khaled putting brothers and sisters back together that was never talking to each other, had big problems. And I was one of the guys that behind the scenes, I don't brag about it. I don't, you know what I'm saying? If there's ever a doc and they want to talk about it, they can. Right. But I've been somebody always that. So as far as somebody changed their verse, I usually get the best out of them. Um, we have maybe tweaked some things because the song got greater in time. So I've been I've been blessed to get the best. When you let's just say for the sake of argument, do you ever say tell who you have on, or you just go ask somebody? You, do you say Weezy? I got Drake. I got Ross. I got Hove on this one. Yeah, yeah. Or do you ever say, or you just like, hey, I'm asking you to be uh, on it? Yeah, I, usually it's, I'm asking you to be on it. And sometimes you, you know, one of the artists might hear two or three people on it already because it's at that stage. Right, okay. But sometimes you got to understand I have to come to you and I have this vision and I have, and you might be the first person to get on it first, but I'm playing you a hit. You're excited. So I, I got to finish the vision. They find out usually later. Right. Like when the video treatment comes. R right. Or I might bump into them like, yo, by the way, song done. Right. I got blah, 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 and we all excited. Right. They know it's going to be an event. Right. But sometimes it but depends they know you the situation. Got, but see, normally they know you got some heavyweights on there. Oh, yeah, so they, they got to come with their best. Oh, oh no. They got to do that. Got to be their best, the biggest and brightest. I promise you, that's one thing they know. <laughs> they know that. We got we to gotta get it in. Right. We got to get it in. Right. And that's the blessing. It's like, my, my album is like the all-star game. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. You yes, know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Matter of fact, Ho said that, and he said, your Cowboys albums is not easy. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like, 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 uh, like, you know, it's like the all stars. Right. And then, you know what Ho said? He said it on his own and, and it touched my heart because I don't be saying, but he said it's not easy because you deal with a lot of personality. Yes. And I don't be saying that. People don't realize that's hard. It is. Because a lot of times the all-star games, we say the all-star games don't live up to expectations. We look at the basketball all-star. We look at baseball right, and football right. all-star game. And even though that's the biggest and brightest stars that we have to offer, right. you're like, uh, it leaves some to be right. left a lot to be desired. So it's, it's, it's not easy. So and 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 the part that's not easy is the beautiful thing is that when people work in the studio with me, we leave all our egos out in okay. the studio. And I'm not saying we got wrong egos, yeah. but when you're the best, you're the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we we work and with I'm trying the best. To be, and every chance I get, I'm trying to show yeah, you I'm the me. best. Talent. I, like I, I be in the studio sometimes with artists, and they're playing this stuff, and I love it. Right? No, I li like literally a fan, and I okay. love it. I'm like this. Yeah. And I'm like, when is it my turn to play something? <laughs> I do it all the time, and I sit there for hours and yeah. let you know. It, and I love it. Right. But when is it my but, turn to play something? Let, I got. It. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just telling you. Yeah. And, and that's the thing about, look what we're talking about. It's so much behind the scenes that people don't know. Right. That's the love of it. You know, it's creating this music and the things that we put into it, as far as presentation is key. You know, if I know if I'm working with an artist, I feel like presentation is so important because, you know, when they first hear it and know the vision, that's the, if they locked in from that moment, you're good. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Football season is well underway. The baseball postseason is here. New basketball and hockey seasons are upon us. While we love watching our favorite teams on television, there's nothing better than being at the game live and in person. And I think I know a little something about that. The best way to get tickets to any of these games is on Game Time, the fastest growing ticket app in the U.S. Game Time is the only ticket app that gives you peace of mind with your purchase. They let you see the view from where your seats are before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. They're all in price. Show total upfront, so you know you always are getting the best deal. And it takes no time at all. You can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, redeem code Shay Shay for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, download the Game Time app, enter the code Shay Shay. That's Shay Shay. S H A Y S H A Y for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute ticket price, lowest price guaranteed. Let's get to your upbringing. Yes, right here, raised up in in, in the Miami. South. Thirty years, Dade County, three hundred five. I live Miami. I breathe. I bleed, and I rep Miami to the fullest. Dade County, three hundred five. I was born into hip hop culture. Okay, I was born into it. Many as in the minute I know what life was. I was listening to hip hop, uh, collecting vinyl records and break dancing, you know, <laughs> from, you know, cardboard. Yeah. You yeah. You're doing, you know, windmills and yeah. suicides and head spins. And, you know, uh, I remember buying my first turntable and cassette tapes and, and speakers. So I was born into hip hop. And I also was born into like dance hall music and right. reg reggae music and soul and funk and jazz from. James Brown, the Funkadelic, the Bob James, the Michael Jackson, the Aretha Franklin, the Stevie Wonder, the Izzy Brothers, to Run DMC, KRS-One, Biggie, Jay-Z, Fat Cho, Pun. You know, I remember my childhood, and in hip-hop, we're one. That's what I love, hip-hop. And the culture, we're one, right? And so when I was coming up, I was loved, but remember, I love. Correct. You gotta, you can't be loved without love. So I love people and I represent one love. So to answer your question, I was loved. Um, but yeah, you know, the, the, you meet people here and there that's, that do ignorant stuff. That's, that's life. Right. Um, and it's, and I'm not a person that would entertain anything that's not a great energy. Right. That's just who I've been my whole life. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's what got me where I'm at today. So what got me in this chair right. talking to you is by me staying focused on the path. And people around me growing up, they always, my guys always protected Khaled. Let's protect Khaled because we want him to win. Like, you know, like when you have somebody that is a basketball player, yeah. player well, you they did that for me in the streets. Right. Like, like my guys were like, yo, Khaled, our guy, we love him. Make sure he focuses and, and, and let him accomplish his dream and his right. goal because he's a beautiful man. I was blessed to have them type of friends around. Right, you know right. What I'm yeah, that's what's And I'm up. here to acknowledge and praise them because, 
you know, that's a beautiful thing where you could protect negative energy to 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 uh disturb the goal and the vision. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like a brother like Fat Joe, you know, co-signed me psh, over uh, two decades ago. Uh, yeah, two decades ago. Saying my name on records, let me DJ for him, put me down with TS, go on tour with him. I'm the godfather of his daughter. That's my brother. Um, and then everybody know you can't play with Joey Crack. <laughs> no. That means you can't play with DJ Cavi. You know what I'm saying? I don't mean it in no crazy way. I'm just telling you is that I was always well respected with love. Right. But at the same time, don't take our kindness for weakness. weakness. That's all I'm saying. Because yeah. a lot of people, they might take your love and kindness for weakness. I want them to take it for greatness. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I say that because I'm always going to love. But don't, you know, pump some people like, yo, there's no way Cali could be that positive. Oh, yes, it can. Yeah. I'm a father. Right. I got two boys. Oh, yes, you can. Right. And guess what? It's going to stay like that. Right. Because I'm not going to let nobody interrupt that thing. So to right. answer your whole question is, you have to love to be loved. Right. Your dad came here with $20 in his pocket. Yes, sir. Every country has their dream. We have the American dream. Yes. I'm sure Germans have the German dream. Whatever yes. that dream is, yes. is that I'm sure your parents told you what the American dream was. But then you get here and you see your family struggle. You're like, what? Well, Damn, is yeah. that dream really possible? Yeah, so, you know, the beautiful thing is my work ethic and my grind came from my mother and father. I give them all the credit. Obviously, God and my mother and father. I remember as a kid, my mom and dad would sell clothes out the trunk in the flea market. Okay. And they used to put the fanny pack on my, and so if they sold a shirt, they put the, put money, the money right in. there. But I was a little kid right. and they put the money in my thing. So I was around the hustle. Right. So I remember them selling stuff out the car. Then eventually get to a shopping center. They end okay. up getting a store in a shopping center. Right. Then I remember them getting a store in a shopping center and end up being to a, a mall. Mm-hmm. And then they actually blew up, meaning as in they started making some real money. Right. But then also when I was like 15 years old, it all got taken away from them. Wow. Like, what what um, happened? I think it was some auditing, you know, that stuff. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it all got took it away. When I say all, like I remember everything. I remember they coming to the store, they wrapped everything up and take the whole store away. I remember seeing So the tax, so the tax yeah, man that, did that. That type of stuff. Took everything. So I had a man up at 15, 16 years old. And remember, I'm in my music career. You know, I started like 13, 12 right. years old. But I was in uh Florida and then it, it hit hard on them. So they went back to New Orleans. And I was like, can I stay in Florida? To fulfill my music career. Remember, I'm young. Right. And they love me so much, my mother and father. They love me so much. Whatever made me happy, they wanted to support me. Like, you know, when the neighbors said the music was too loud, they built the garage into a studio. You know, like the, the, the things right. that I remember as a kid, right. they didn't say stop. No, they said, we love you. Keep doing what you do. Right. They supported my music. They supported hip hop. And um, I remember like 18, 19, I had a man up officially, you know, 15, 16 now, got a man up. So how to take care of them and me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so who did they leave? So when they went back to New Orleans, you stayed here I in stayed, Miami with who? I, um, I've been with my wife for like 19 years. Before that, I had a girl before her. Uh-huh. So it was a, a friend of mine, I mean, a girlfriend of mine I came to Miami with. Right. And, you know, I used to stay at her mother's house. And I used to stay in, uh, sleep in the back of the Honda Civic. And then sometimes I would find a hotel um and stay in i didn't have a really we didn't have a really place to stay and when i did i kept getting kicked out of the evicted i couldn't pay the apartment note or the music was too loud i had to keep getting kicked out right i used to make like a hundred dollars a week i remember driving down this road where i live now and i remember saying i'm going to live here one day um i started a pirate radio underground radio out here then i ended up doing uh the big radio station with uncle luke he gave me my opportunity on 99 jams after his show he went on tour. I ended up doing my own show there. I ended up being big on radio. While I was on radio, I was producing music. Brothers like Fat Joe co-signed me. And, the, and it's the love and respect of uh, me in Miami, seven days a week working. It just blossomed. And then the, the success, I'm telling you in a short form, it just started. Right. I grinded so much. So the, the answer to your question is, we come from the mud what? to now limestone and marble floors. And we put in that work. Right. Just like you did and everybody else did that's watching, I'm sure. Everybody got a story. Does it make you appreciate what you have this now even more? Knowing how your parents immigrated here, knowing how the struggle, knowing you had lost it all and recaptured it tenfold. Every day I I take a shower and I I look on the floor and it's marble. 
I said, I don't never want to do this marble floor. I'll be taking a shower like, oh, no, I ain't crazy. I got to stay focused. I don't take nothing for granted. Right. And I got this one thing, too, is I tell everybody, I ain't going to argue about no blessing. Like, you know, sometimes we don't realize we get in arguments and biggers over blessings. Yes. I'm like, yo, you see this view we sitting on right now? We shouldn't even... We should be like, what's should, the discussion? Yeah, what are we talking about? You heard that bird? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. Like, you, you see the cappuccino with the cognac? Like, are you, <laughs> like, are you all right? Like, but see, it take it takes somebody to say it for somebody to realize. You know what? You're right. Right. See, I'm not afraid to get in the middle of a, a conversation. Say, yo, ain't no clouds outside. It's a blue sky. You can't be tripping right now. Right. I have to remind myself, and there's nothing wrong. Because I enjoyed every moment of my hard times. Yes. I enjoyed it. Makes you appreciate the yeah, good yeah, times Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was, so, it was hard to get where I'm at now. It was hard. But it reminds me how hard it was. That's why I make sure I never, ever not give thanks for it. You know what I'm saying? Because those trials and tribulations is what makes us. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? And it makes us a better person. Mm -hmm. And makes us appreciate when we do get something. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. That's it. You mentioned that you watch your family, your mom and dad struggle, make it selling coal at the trunk yeah. or the car and then get a strip mall and go to the big mall yep. and they're making some real money. And get it and all then taken away. Get it all taken away. That shaped you because I read where you personally pay everything. I, pay I don't know how to handle nothing. I pay everything and, I, and that's the biggest blessing. You, anybody that's watching this, take care of your mother and father. Take care of them. Even if they don't need to be taken care of them, take care of them. You, you, you pay all their bills. You work for your family. You have kids, you work for your kids. You have a wife, you work for your wife. That's the number one thing you gotta do. My mom and dad, like right now, my mom texted me right now. I think, uh, she went to go to um, Tallahassee and they could have drove. I'm like, no, I'm gonna send you a car service so you and dad don't have to drive. Enjoy the ride. You don't need to drive by yourself. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, little thing, oh, I love you, son, boom, boom. Yo, uh, uh, my mom will go, yo, whatever you need. Um, I bought him a beautiful house. That was the best feeling in the world. I remember buying my dad a car. And I remember them buying me a car. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know how that, that, that's, and I got kids. You know what I'm saying? And I tell my kids, everything I, is for you. But I teach them the same way my, my mom and dad taught me hard work. And they made sure they took me to work so I could see that. But they also showed me 100% love while they was working. Yeah. So I got to see the work and them being the best mother and father. You know what I'm saying? So. They taught me to be a mother and father. They taught me how to be a man, and they taught me how to stay focused. But you pay you pay the, the electric bill, the gas bill, everything. You you, everything. you, you person you don't have, you don't pass that off to nobody, Kelly. I don't believe in no accountant. I don't believe in <laughs> what's the thing called money manager. Yeah. yeah, all that. That's your business. Callie has all his. I, I pay the grass, the car wash man, <laughs> the guy that's cut my hair, the electric bill, the car note, the mortgage. I, I, I have a rule where my bank got to tell me. Even if I tell them I approve it, don't listen to me. <laughs> no, I'm, the, I, no see, I'm not making it. I want you to end up, I'll give you my banker's number and ask them. I said, do not listen to me. And because I get on an email or a text, I approve. I do that, but they have to get a verbal. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna call you and talk me. Talk and to Kelly. FaceTime. Yeah. Cause it's AIs out there. Yeah, now. okay. You gotta see me. I'm, shit, I don't make nothing up. This is the truth. And because this, I have a rule, right? And tell me if you agree. You, you, you might, I don't know how you do your thing, but I have a rule. If you pay for everything yourself, you notice you're paying too much for stuff, right? And you right. notice you're, you know, you gotta balance. It right. goes like this all the time. I got a rule. The balance got to always go like that. <laughs> so if I touch that, that means it got to be replaced that hour no more than two weeks. Right. Okay, that's just a rule in my life. Wow. Now, if I notice I'm paying so much, if I let somebody else say, oh, they pay the bills, you're not going to notice it in real time because it gives you a harder time to fix it. Right. While I'm paying all these bills, traveling, vacation, my mom's bills, my house bills, you know, shopping, the chef. The kids. You probably help your wife, family. Everybody. Like, and I'm happy, but I feel it. And while I'm feeling it, it tells me, book that gig, book that gig. <laughs> um, yep, I'm going over there. Oh, I said no to that. I changed my mind. <laughs> not, are we keeping it real or not? You keep it the like, 100. We can, 
We could talk all this big b business manager. No. And no disrespect to all you beautiful business managers out there. I don't want to mess up your hustle. But I've heard a lot of crazy stories. Right. Okay. And there's no way in the world I'm letting somebody have the power to touch the hard work. Right. No way. What, what is it about garages? Because you said when you growing up and, and, and the neighbors said the music was too loud, you, 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 they gave you, put you in the garage and made it like sound so they, they couldn't hear. You see, Amazon was started in a garage. Yeah, 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 Microsoft yeah, yeah, was started yeah, yeah, yeah. in a garage. Google was I remember started. I posted what? up a picture. You know how they always have like, the, you know, the, the, the picture of like how Apple started. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I put a picture of me in the garage, how I started too. <laughs> Which, like, what, what's, what's the difference? Like, no, I mean, yes. see, I'm just keeping it real. That's, yes. that's, so, you know, the garage for me is, it was always my, my room, my studio, everything I put in there, all my vinyl records. So the garage, you know, I always like, I tell my team, I'm in that garage mode. Right. Okay. To let them know I'm in that mode. Like I'm in that hustle. And my garage was like my, my penthouse suite because I would sleep there. I would make my music there. I would have all my Bob Marley, Jay-Z posters hanging up, Nas, all my favorite rappers. It was just my, you know, when you was growing up, your yeah. room, but yeah. it was a garage because we built it into a studio. And even when I started making a few dollars, I, I built um, my first house ever bought, built my garage and made it in a studio just to give it that feeling, right? Um, and then in time, you know, it upgraded. It just became a better garage. Right. But it's just that garage. You know, Apple, Amazon, that. What about we the best? We started in a garage too. You right. know what I'm saying? That's what I was just saying. Let me ask you this. How do you get your two boys? You saw your family lose everything and you immigrated. Your boys only know this. Right. So how do you give them that work ethic when they see all the cars, one of 150 of Virgil yeah, Globe, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybach. I call that the cappuccino. The cappuccino. Yeah, okay, you, yeah, the cappuccino. Yeah, yeah. They fly private. They don't yeah. know what it's like to be in an airport. You're, you're right. So how do you you're teach right. your boys right. to have that kind of work ethic like their dad in a situation where all they know is lavish? I, I have the answer. I make sure they, they're around me and I tell them and remind them because they always say, Daddy, um, can we do this? I said, Daddy got to work. They see me right here. Daddy got to work. Daddy in the studio. But to be the honest truth, have you met my wife yet? <laughs> I did see at the corner of my eye, your son was sitting she, back there. She, she motioned she, for him she, to come and he us, got up. She keeps us all on our toes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm the one that says, yes, 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 yes. You want this? Yes, yes, yes. And she's like, no, 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 no. Not in a bad way. You got to learn to work, like right. you say. So you got to have a balance. But when you're around, just the same way I was right, when you're around, like, he sees me up late hours. Sometimes he'll wake up to go to school and daddy's still in the studio. Or daddy's in the office. Um, when we go on the road, like, you know, mommy's taking him to a water park. I'm in the uh, hotel room and I made one of the rooms into my office in the studio where I'm doing a photo shoot or I'm making music. And he knows that's my love, but he also knows that's what daddy does. Right. So he understands that. But at the same time, I want to give props to my wife and my queen. She keeps all of us on a toe. So, and Shannon, I'm sure you've. There's times that you might be feeling yourself. You're like, yeah. you know, I'm Shannon Sharp, yeah. and I just came home, got done watching. Uh, you had the King James watching the basketball yeah. game. You wore the fly sneakers. You know you was looking fly. You got the number one show. You know, you feel, it's all right to feel good for like a day, right? Yes. My wife, she, 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 she remind me out the gate. I, I can't even have a chance to feel that for a second because she keep me on my toes. And in a positive way, not yes. in a bad way. Right. Like, yo, don't get it twisted. Mm. And I love it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I love about my family. Is we, we, we real, we pure. And she keeps me on my toes. So I can never start feeling myself. And, and you know, it's all right to do it for a second, but I, I don't have that time to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? The reality is we bless. Let's keep going. Stay right. focused. A lot of... You guys started off as DJs. I look yeah. at Ludacris. Yeah. Look at you. A lot of Dr. these other Dre. Dr. Dre. It's Swiss Beats. What, Timberland. What, what? Well, the DJ, you know what's so beautiful about the DJ and, 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 and bless up all the DJs out there. The DJ, man, we have an opportunity to wear all the hats because we play the music and we have to move the crowd. And I was a special type of DJ. Not only did I cut and scratch and blend, I was a DJ and an artist because when I performed, I didn't just play the records. Yeah, I played the records, but it's the way I played it. It's the way I brought it in. It's the way I was on stage. It's the way I made you put your hands up. So I started turning into an artist. 
but every DJ is an artist, but you have to be able to take it to the next level. Then that love and that passion for music, it taught me how to make records. That's why my records, if you notice, you know, the way they start, the way they end, the way the hooks, is because I know um, what makes the people move and what makes people put their hand up or that feeling, you know what I'm saying? Your job is to keep the people on the floor. Right. And when I used to work, remember, I used to be on the radio. Right. So, you know, radio number one rule is play the hits only. Right. That's just the way radio, like, the job is play the hits. But right. But now, if you don't, they'll turn off. Right. So, imagine me in the studio. I just took all that mentality and said, Callum, make the hits. You know what I'm saying? And But hits are in different forms. I can make a... A slow jamming can be a hit. Right. I can make something with up tempo that can hit. I can make it uh, something with energy it can be a hit. I can make something that make you cry and can be a hit. There's different hits. There's different emotions when it comes down to making music. And a DJ has to learn all that because say I'm in a club and I got to turn up, but say I'm at a wedding, I got to turn up, but also set the mood. Yeah, yeah. You got to be able to play um, little baby, but find a way to play. Uh, before I let go, you yes, know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, you got to be like Kid Capri. Yeah. You know, he, 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 uh, he's somebody I looked up to as a DJ. You know, he used to come to a party and have it ripped down. Then he'll go into like, to be real. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. He'll be going to that, but then go right into uh, hypnotize. You know, you got to know how to transition. And that's part of being an artist. But that's also when you're in the studio and become a producer, you take all that knowledge and start making this incredible music. But Khaled, I mean, you came out the gate and you had, I mean, very few people can come out the gate and get the biggest stars on the album. You did that from the jump. Well, you got to remember, I've known Lil Wayne, you know, I was there when Lil Wayne met Birdman. I used to work at the record store, a record store in New Orleans called Odyssey Records. And Lil Wayne used to go to the record store and I used to DJ at the record store. That's how much I loved that I worked at a record store and I found a way for the owner to let me DJ while customers come in. Right. And Birdman and them used to pull up to the record store and out their trunk bring cassettes at that time. This is back when they, this is before they had their deal. Right. And they would sell the tapes. And I remember it was like a BG tape and then like a juvenile. And, and record companies used to call all the time saying, is this really selling that much? And I'm like, yeah, you would drop it off and it was selling five seconds. Like it would sell out. So Wayne, I'm just trying to show you how I work with the biggest. I've known them for so long. We all came up. Majority of the biggest artists that we all love out here I came up with them at that time. I was either younger or we was grinding at the same time and we ended up just building this relationship. So when you see a Ross or a Wayne or a Future, I remember me and Future before Future was Future. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. And then, you know, you're blessed to build this relationship, but at the same time, I might be on a promo tour or we might be doing a show together and we keep bumping into each other. We just respect each other because we grinding together. We trying to make it. And at the same time as we end up getting the studio together. Right. So the beginning of my career, yeah, I was around all the greats, but they were becoming the greats. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's how, it's, just, it's just God made sure that not only was I a sponge of greatness, was I was, I was, you know that saying, I was there? Yeah. I was there. Right. Where are you on this AI technology? Because we, we see, I mean, you mentioned it that, hey, they can take, and make yeah. and do DJ yeah. Khaled yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. They can basically do what DJ Khaled do without DJ yeah. Khaled. Yeah, I, you know, it's scary for me. Um, because I just don't want people to use it the wrong way. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's the scary part. But um, I really don't know too much about it to give you the full answer, but I am scared of it. When I say scared of it, like this is like a little too much. Right. But I'm not gonna be the guy that's a dinosaur. Right. You know, you know, you gotta embrace the new world and the new technology. If AI is the way to go, yeah, DJ and, Khaled and, is... And, and, and it's not just the AI I'm saying. I'm not going to make music with AI, but I'm saying this. But just like when the iPhone came out, just like right now when I was getting dressed, I was looking at my Instagram, they tell me they just, they just approved the first flying car. <laughs> like, I'm like, stop. Yeah. Like, this is getting out of control now. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I don't know if I'm looking at some fake page or something, but it said just approved the first flying car. I'm like, okay. You gonna but, get it too, Andy Cal. No, I got to, but I, <laughs> no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying. So what I'm saying is we gotta embrace the new generation. Right. We gotta embrace the new world. And we cannot be caught up in the dinosaur world. Right. We have to move up. But as far as AI, I it's scary for me. I, I I've been seeing too much stuff that it's not I didn't hear I didn't see nothing positive yet out of right. it. 
Show me what positive can right. come out of it. Right. I haven't seen it yet. Where, where are you on sampling? I love sampling. Um, I think that's part of uh, hip hop culture. I love it. And what I love about it is that, um, like the records that say I've sampled a Michael Jackson record or uh, Ozzy Brothers or a James Brown or whatever. What I love about sampling, that's how hip hop, that's how it started. We sampled records, we looped them. And what I love about it is that the music that we sample and it just shows you the power of music, how timeless it right. is. But what I love about today's time, you now you can sample records that was 20 years ago that you would have never sampled because we was always busy sampling the 70s, the 80s, and some of the early, late 60s, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. now, we can, now people are starting to sample the 90s and the early 2000s, 2000s. Correct. which is super dope because those were like some special records mm -hmm. and like Wild Thoughts. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I always wanted to do that, but I waited a certain amount of time before I felt like it was okay to do it. And the new generation might have never heard the original. Right. So I love sampling. I think sampling is incredible and I encourage anybody that make music Always sample and and make some new stuff too, because sampling you got to be creative to make it still sound great. Right, it's part of producing. Right, yeah. It said Drake DM you on MySpace, you ignored him. So so Drake <laughs> told me I, I'm sure Drake remembers this, but Drake told me a long time ago that he used to hit me on MySpace, and I didn't know how to work that MySpace stuff. And I'm saying <laughs> to myself, oh my god, if I had an opportunity to sign a Drake or work with Drake before Drake was Drake, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it just shows you that he had love for me as a producer, a DJ, and as an artist. The music I was making, he had love for me. Right. And that's so dope because, you know, it's one of the biggest artists in the world. And he's my family, and he's my brother. But just to know before he exploded, he was listening to DJ Khaled, too. Wow. And, and I hear those stories all the time. Like, Khaled, I remember when you put out I'm So Hood. And the person that's saying it is like the biggest artist in the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, it's crazy. But, and, but I don't never get caught up. Um, I felt like I made that yesterday. Because if you notice my career, I come out every year with music and I'm just so consistent that I never get caught up in time. I, get, I just make sure I keep going. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. why I feel like that's, that's the beauty. It's like in, in sports, you, you can't take a few years off and expect to play the same. No. So I'm just keep Gotta going. Got to be consistent. Now, don't get it twisted. You know, there's guys like us that just, we just rare. And we one of one, we unicorns, and we timeless. We special. Um, like, if I wanted to stop today, I know that the blessing that God gave me, I can give you something. I'm not saying that I would give you that amount of body of work I right. would usually do. Right. But the blessing is I know I'm one of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know you one of them. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. good because, yeah. you know. I DM'd you, you hit me back. I, I, I DM wrong, you hit I me back. Wait. Drake, Drake, I, you hit me I'm like, yo, my man, Shay, he just, I, that's how, I look, he hit me up. That's how we got this interview how, done. I DM'd him, right. and he, that's right. he like, bless up, bro, I would I love to. Anytime, brother. So, so, you mentioned your queen. Yes, love her. How did you know she was the one? When we met, uh, I just got a house, right? And it was my first house, mm -hmm. I had no furniture. It was just records all over the floor. You know, nothing in the refrigerator. But I was just excited I got the house. Right. You know, at that time, <laughs> somebody told me you could put $30,000 down and you can get a house for $500,000. i am like, huh? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Well, that was a special time. Matter of fact, after I got it, the recession hit. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, so that's yeah, what around happened. 2008 right. then. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, around that time. Yeah. Exactly. That was my first house. <laughs> exactly. Um, but she came and, man, she started cooking for me and she, she gave me a pillow and some sheets and um, obviously she's beautiful, but her, her, uh, not just the beautiness, but her heart and her soul and the way she cared for me. Like, you know, she introduced me to cocoa butter, you know, <laughs> I, you know, she's like, yo, baby, you asked, you need some cocoa butter. Right. You know, she introduced me to Dove soul. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, I might've used a different one. It's just the little things. And it was just the care. And I never had that care only for my mother. Right. You know, I'm out here hustling. I'm out here grinding. I was washing my own clothes. So it'd be like, it'd be crazy. You know what I'm saying? She came in to show me that love, but I call her my spiritual advisor. Um, and she's not a regular spiritual advisor because she's tough. And I love it. And when I say tough, meaning as in she just, like the other day, like say if I'm 
I'm like, yo, ma, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's a lot. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm human. Well, I'm not human. I'm, I'm, I'm special human. I was just telling her, like, ma, it's a lot. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot on me. Boom, boom. And she's like, you got this. And immediately, I was like, you're right. That's all I needed to hear. Right. You know what I'm saying? So she was my, not only my lover, my best friend. Right. You know? And um, she gave me my two beautiful boys. And I told her, we forever. To hear you talk, I had Steve Harvey on about two months ago, and he mentioned how Margie helped him level up. It put him in a different frame of mind that she gave him the positivity to think that he he was Superman. That's what she does for me. And to hear you she talk, that, and I didn't know he he said that, and I know that feeling because sometimes I'd be like, "Yo, ma, like it's like like come on," and she'd be like, "You got this," in so many ways, and I'm like, "Man, you're right." And I get it done. She get me like, she makes sure I keep my head up high, my chest up high, and let's get it. You, know, you know what, Callie? She came into this and saw how hard you was working. Absolutely. So now that you're working hard, she don't say, well, baby, you don't have any time for me and the boys. You, she understands. Oh, 100%. That you got to work to maintain. She, 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 and to she tells me all the time, because you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's times where I don't want to go out of town. Right. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm chilling and, and, I'm, and I'm still working. Right. Um, but she understands, like, we we love you. We, we got you. You know, we know we, you know, you know what you're doing. But she'll keep me going. Cause sometimes, and I'm sure everybody goes through it. You know, we got that time where like we don't feel like doing something. Yes. And she'll give me that extra push to go get it done. Right. And I'm like, man, thanks for pushing me because I really needed to get right. that done. You and Ross, y'all are really big. Brothers. Because you guys, I mean, you allow your fans inside your life through your point of view. You held the camera. You yeah. don't have, you know, yeah. you hold the camera. You yeah. talk directly. All you me. go IG live. You do all the things. You guys had some, you had, I think, a jet ski incident. And Ross was yeah, trying yeah, to do yeah, a one. Yeah, thought yeah. it was Greg Luganus. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, how, why, how can you, like, make a lie to yourself and keep it moving? Well, what happened was I lived on one part of Miami and he lived on the other part. Okay. So I had my jet ski and I was like, you know what? He just got his big, you know how Ross do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. You know, Ross, he, he show you every day how he do it. Yeah. So he got his new house on the water, boom, boom. I'm like, yo, I'm going to pull up on you on a jet ski. I ain't realize how far it was. <laughs> I'm just like, so I'm riding, riding, riding. And this is late afternoon. So I get there with no problem. I go to his house. We in the backyard. He showed me his new boat. You know, Ross with no shirt on. Kelly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the whole movie. We chilling. So now I'm leaving. And it's like close to seven. So I'm riding and I'm realizing getting dark and you know i'm far like i no, i'm not even making this up i drove too far on a jet ski yeah. and it was to a point where it's not just that one strip where there's houses and then you see lights it goes into the big ocean and then you got to go under this bridge and then get back to the strip right. to where i need to go right. so i went to the big ocean and got dark so i finally found a way to get back and it was so dark that i got lost you know what i'm saying remember this is like me going out there for fun not realizing so now my Snapchat, um, I'm Snapchatting and I'm telling everybody, I have a code that people know around me. I call my, my, my queen, Zazie. Yo, tell Zazie, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I'm, you know, I'm, I'm texting everything, okay. but I'm sending messages because hopefully somebody see in a positive way. Yeah, yo, tell Zazie, come check me. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm keeping my cool because I didn't want to panic. You know, I'm, I, I get some anxiety attacks. Right. <laughs> I, I've had panic attacks. Right. I didn't want to have one on the water. So I'm riding and it's pitch dark. Oh, yeah. No, it's pitch dark. So the flash on my phone was my light. So I was Snapchatting on Instagram the whole time to keep the light. And I knew my battery's eventually going to go. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm like an hour on the ski. And I'm just completely lost. And um, the blessing is, you know, we end up, um, I end up finding, you know, see some lights. It was, it was real scary. I wouldn't recommend nobody jet ski at nighttime. It was never a joke. It yeah. was real thing. You can't jet ski at night. There's a reason <laughs> no. why. And even if you had lights, it don't make no sense. Or I wouldn't even go on a boat at night. But he lived too far. Right. And I'm thinking it was just that easy because I was just so excited to be right. on a jet ski. Right. And it ended up being like, uh, end up hitting the news in yes. Miami and um, Coast Guard, everything. It was a real thing. I just made, I kept my sense of humor so I wouldn't have a panic attack. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I get panic attacks, I can't lie. When I fly, I get right. panic attacks, stuff like that. Right. So now you have all this, you've accumulated all this. What's next for DJ Khaled? I mean, what's next is just to continue to be great, conquer more categories, conquer more dreams and goals.
but it's not about me. Right. Everything's for my kids. So I'm at a point, I said earlier in this interview, I, I'm at a point where I'm at peace. And when I say I'm at peace, I'm at peace to know that I'm happy and I'm blessed. It's time for me to go to the next level. Right. And by going to the next level, is that means I have to conquer more goals and dreams. Right. And to continue what got me here at its highest level. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's what we do naturally. Right. So now I'm about to say, Calvin, we about to get real disrupted over here in a good way and let's take over this. Right. And you're gonna see what I mean in, 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 in the months to come that you're gonna see the progression of Khaled as an entrepreneur. Okay. I'm opening a new store on South Beach. We the best snipes, superstore, first time ever, uh, right there in Seventh and Collins. That's opening August 3rd. Our foundation is growing so much. We, we put in 24 hours, seven days a week into the foundation. My wife and Anissa and the whole team doing amazing with that. I'm about to one day conquer the television and film world. Like I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I, yes, I've been in it. I do it, but I'm coming. I'm coming to the same way I came with my music and everything. I'm doing. I'm coming for that camera. Right. You know, there's so many things that I'm gonna be doing, and that's what I mean by going next level. At one point in your life, you have to tell yourself you want to continue to do the same thing and win, which you do great at, or do you want to do that yourself. and that? You want to challenge yourself. Yes, now. I am. I'm at that. I'm at that point in my life. Mm -hmm. And then I'm. I, remember, my idols is Jay Z. Right. You know, saying uh, shout out to Puff Daddy, shout out to Quincy Jones, Dr. Dre. You know, Michael Jordan. Um, this all the greats. And you think about like Jay Z. Look what he did. Look mm. where he came from. And look how many categories he accomplished from foundation to Rock Nation to Super Bowl to. Um, being one of the biggest, you know, artists to Beyonce. being a, uh, uh, a Beyonce, the queen, <laughs> to the, the, uh, being a beautiful father, then, yeah. and then, uh, uh, management and, you know, the spirits brand. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, you know, if you watch me, I always scream, we the best all categories. Well, he's been doing that. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And he shows us that, that it's possible. Right. When somebody shows you it's possible, me, I get inspired. Right. And I praise it. You know, and, and I think, and that goes back to what I said, we have to learn to appreciate each other because a lot of people want to hate on each other when all you need to do is be inspired and, and appreciate it and embrace it because that means you can do it right. too. Right. You gotta got to want to do it. I got two questions I want to get you out here on this. Dr. Dre, and I heard him say that he had an opportunity. He said no to Michael Jackson yeah. and no to Prince. I know. I, I just seen that. Is there anybody that DJ Khaled would say no to? Um... Because it's tough. Because if the record don't come out well, Khaled. I know what Dre was coming from. I definitely know what he was coming from because I've had opportunities to work with a lot of greats that, um, besides on my project, and I just want to be able to give them what I would give myself. Okay. Um, and so what I've done is I, I, I thank for the opportunity and I just tell the person, um, give me a second. Let me, let me see if I can give you what, what you're looking for because I know what you're looking for. Right. Because you asked me because of what I've done with me. Right. So let me give you me, but I have to be in that place to give you that. So I understood what Dre was saying, but that, you know, Dre's a GOAT. And he's, he's, he, he's, he's one of the best that ever did it. But I respected what he said. That's why, that's why I love Dre. Because by him answering that and saying that, I was like, man, you know, how humble, you know what I'm saying, he was. And for Michael Jackson and Prince, and he was just like, yo, they the GOAT. And meanwhile, he's the GOAT. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's why he's the GOAT. Right. And that's what I want the young world to know out there. That's why he's the GOAT. Right. Because he said that. Now, could he did it? Of course he could have. But I understood. You know what I'm saying? Last one. Tony Yayo was on Drink Champ. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said he came down here. He said everything. He said he thought everything was cool. Yeah, so he yeah. showed up at the studio. Then all of a sudden, you ain't shake his hand. Yeah, yeah. Had your friend in the corner yeah. with that fire on him. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, I, 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 well, I don't know. I don't know about all that. I just know. Uh, I know about the shaking hand part. Okay. Um, I don't know about all that other stuff. You okay? You know what I'm saying? But um, I am the definition of loyalty. Okay. Um, anybody that know Coward, I'm a loyal friend, and if you're loyal to me, I'm loyal to you. But also, a loyal meaning as in it's it's not just the word loyalty. It, it's family. Yes. Right. I'd be uncomfortable knowing that. You and this person are not getting along, and I know it's serious. Right. I'm uncomfortable acting like everything is cool when I'd rather just be at peace and walk away from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So at that time, 
you know, I work at a radio station. Everybody's welcome at a radio station. Correct. So you could never involve them type of situations. Correct. And I understood that. And I've always been somebody that showed love. But and when he was when they told me he was coming up, I was like, wow. Like, oh, you, know, you, you, I, you I was like, no, I was just saying to myself, like, really? You know, him and my man don't get along. And I was like, damn. What and me I, and my man, cool. Yeah, and no, and not he's, he's my brother. Yeah. Like for real though. And I was just saying to myself, this is gonna be hard for me because I said if I would have completely embraced them, I probably wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Yeah, because your brother's gonna look at you sideways. But, but, and, and, and if I did, I would have called him immediately, like, yo, this is what just happened. And I would have been trying to explain myself. Right. That's how much I care. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, would I have done things differently now? I probably would have did the same thing, but I would have tried to put myself where I wouldn't have had to be in that room. Yeah. You but, took the day off of work. Yeah, I would have took it. But I didn't <laughs> want to do that because I knew, because I wanted, you know, it would have looked like I was, you know what I'm saying? It would look like right. you was dodging him. So if you want to know the story's true, yeah. let's talk about the handshake Okay, part. the handshake's true. The hand, you didn't shake his hand yet. By the way, it's all love now. We good now. Everybody's all love now. Yes. You, uh, Fat Joe, I have nothing but love for everybody. Right. I have no problem with nobody. I want right. to make that clear. Right. I love everyone. Okay. We know that was when we were younger. Um, he did come shake my hand. I told him I can't do that. You what do you do like that? Yeah, just like that yeah, I just told him I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I so, couldn't. What he, so, so what did he say? <laughs> he felt some type of way? <laughs> <laughs> Man, like, 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 you know what I'm saying? If I ever put a documentary out, it's gonna be interesting. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow. And the thing is that what's so beautiful is that we're, we're able to talk about right it now, now. and have a laugh and a smile about it. Um, and um, you know, when he told the story and I heard him and he said he respected me um, and he understood. Right. And that was love. Right. You know saying that was love, him saying that, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I just couldn't shake his hand at that moment. Right. And, and Joe will tell you, I was the guy, Joe will tell you, so I want you to ask him this. I was the guy saying, we don't need no problems with those guys. Right. We don't need no problems with nobody. Correct. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, or anybody. It's right. It's not the particular guys. See, Kelly, we I need- I was always the guy like, why are we having problems? Why we, I'm like, why? We need- Why? We I'm need- like, I'm a kid, I'm going, why? We needed I'm you. Like, I used to go to Joe, why? Like, with, <laughs> why? With, with tears why? of love, like, why don't? No, we love everyone. But that's just, you know, it's like. Well, see, we needed this DJ Khaled in the mid 90s. Yeah. So well, their call, it would have broken the peace between the East well, and well, the I'm West. Well, I'm going to be real with you. It, well, yeah, that was deep. But, um, but this situation, I was that DJ Khaled I am now. It's just the only difference is I'm a true friend too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't go in there trying to be, cause a problem. Right. I just couldn't. I you probably would have caused more of a problem doing it the way. Right. Exactly. I said, I could, I don't know how to be fake. Correct. That's the thing. Right. Say I have a, say it me and you forget that situation. Say any situation. It could be about, um, we might agree on something and I see you in public. I'm gonna come to you not to cause a problem. I'm gonna pull you aside. I'm like, yo, I just want you to know I, you know, I just don't know how to be fake. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think by me being like that can make things better mm -hmm. because you know it's it's coming from a, a good place and I don't know how to be fake. And I'm sure a lot of people don't right. know how to be fake. Not everybody's like us, but it's just that's how it be sometimes. Right. You know, I like um take off the path, the tragic passing of takeoff, Quavo and Offset had some differences, oh, but to see them get together. Man, those are brothers, you know. I love all three of those brothers. Those brothers, one of my favorite groups, uh, Take Off, man, God bless him, man, one of the most beautiful people. Yeah. No, when I tell you, like, he's so kind, just a beautiful man, and Quavo, and Offset. Yeah. The three beautiful brothers. So to see Quavo and um, Offset together, that was beautiful. And, they, and, and it, they, it's for their brother, not even that, that's what we want, you right. know, is that love. Um, and that's the only way for me, I'm always going to love them and I want them to love each other. And I think the world and the universe, you know, want nothing but love for them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And we love take, take off. God bless you, brother. OK, there's been a lot of speculation. Dame Lillard wants to be traded. That's what's the, uh, been circulating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know you made the yeah, Lionel yeah, message. You yeah, was on yeah, IG yeah, Live talking, yeah, welcoming yeah, Lionel yeah, message. Sure. If the heat came to Khaled, say Khaled. We think we can get him, but we need you to give the best sales pitch of your I life. I got us. I got us. How you get Dame? I'm Dame Lillard. Maybe come to Miami. Dame is nothing to think about. <laughs> um, congratulations. <laughs> You're going to win four rings in a row. Um, 
do you want your house on the water lot or do you want it on the corner water lot overlooking the whole ocean or do you want one looking over the city? Right. You want a ring? How about four of them? Um, you want the best coach? We have it. It's nothing to talk about. Let, let, me, let me break this down, right? Somebody asked me when LeBron made his decision. Right. You know, LeBron's my friend. Yes. I remember when he said, I'm taking my talents to South Beach. Somebody interviewed me the other day, said, Khaled, um, when he made that decision, how'd you feel? I'm saying, uh, he's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think he was going to say? <laughs> this is Miami. Like, yes. You can't be serious, right? right. This ain't wacky scientists. I'm not going to let nobody like fool me like there's a reason like why Like you overthink why not. this thing. No, there ain't no overthinking. This is Miami, the most beautiful city in the world. Uh, so much culture. Our basketball team, we have banners, you know, the AC, you know, they blow in the sky. They, they, they're hanging. Yeah. We've had from Tim Hardaway to Shaq to King James to Ray Allen. D-Wade. D-Wade. D-Wade about to be, um, what they about to, what, what, yeah, um, Hall of Fame. the Hall of Fame. You know what I'm saying? Like, our team, look what we did this year. Look what we did the other year. We've always been doubted, but Pat Riley and our coach, they know how to take players from one superstar and, and form a whole team around one superstar to create new superstars. Imagine if we did get Dang. my man Dane. Imagine, right? He know already the ring is, and I, and I don't want to, you know, nothing's guaranteed in life. Of course it is. <laughs> stop. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's stop. So, Dame, if you're worried about you want to bring a ring to your old team, LeBron did for Cleveland. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with You going, go back, go back. Yeah, go back after three, four years. Come get it, come, come get this vibe. Come and Damon's my you know, I, I haven't seen him in a while, but we got love for each other. Yeah. And me and you gonna be chilling, man. <laughs> you're gonna be in the backyard living it up, and we're gonna play some basketball, and you're gonna have some rings. Come on. There's nothing to think about. I think, I think he's on the same page. They, they they're gonna make it hard. Yeah. Cause it's it's too good to be true. Right. It's gonna happen though. Appreciate it. Ah, my man. Love you, brother. DJ Khaled, That's ladies right. and gentlemen. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Yeah. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life.